We're here at Sports Tech Tokyo with Tracy DeForge from the Players Impact. Um, and there are all kinds of ways that I want to take this conversation from a leadership perspective, but I think one of the first ones is just, uh, we're in a time where athletes more and more are trying to invest and trying to you know, leverage their assets, leverage you know, their business sites in different directions. Uh, and I guess for you, what, what's kind of, where's this going in terms of what do people from the outside not get about it? I think they see just you know, a Kevin Durant or a LeBron saying, I want to invest in these things. It's a lot more complicated than that, but what goes on behind the scenes that maybe the average person doesn't get goes into the equation for these guys? Um, I would think the first distinction is the Kevin Durants of the world are investing right now. They're they're known for the funds that their mm -hmm. their venture capital, traditional venture capital funds. What we're doing that's a little bit different is really bringing the athletes to the startups in a in a new way that is more. Um, angel investing style, mm -hmm. where the athletes are making the decisions themselves. They're not putting money in the hands of a fund manager. They're getting educated on how to evaluate the opportunities and making the decisions on their own. Yeah, that's fantastic. And so how do you, from a leadership perspective, you have to kind of play both sides, right? You have to be able to be the matchmaker and introduce them to the potential opportunities. You have to be able to talk to them directly and say, you know, I would imagine kind of advise them what a good deal is or isn't, a good opportunity is or isn't. What have you learned from doing this and from trying to facilitate all those relationships. What we do is curate good opportunities, right? So we see a lot of, uh, especially sports tech, but we see a lot of deal flow. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes that the athletes are bringing them to us and asking us to evaluate them. If, they, if we think it's a good opportunity, we'll bring it back to the broader uh, group and they'll, they'll make, again, the decision on their own. Okay. What we're learning about their process as, as they're having these conversations, they're learning about how to evaluate the deal mm -hmm. based on a moderated pitch calls that we do. Okay, are there any areas of priority that some of the athletes you've worked with have wanted to invest in that have surprised you, that made you think, I would not have expected them to look in this space and see the opportunity there? Uh, no, I don't think anything that's surprising. What's more surprising to me is how they'll, um, some of them will be very specific about the types of investments they wanna do, if it's eSports or, their passion points, concussion technology, things mm. like that. So what do you, I mean, you're a great person to ask because you're seeing all of this, you know, before the deals reach fruition, right? Before the wider public sees, well, this is where a lot of athlete investment is starting to go. You've already seen probably 10 times the amount of conversations before it happens. So what is the future? Where do you think athletes are going to continue to focus their attention and their resources um, over the next several years? Yeah, I see the athletes as making their own decisions and empowering, getting more empowered to create the new revenue streams via the marketing, using their social influence to not only get better sponsorship deals, but to, to leverage that inside of the startup ecosystem. Are there any particular areas within there? Like you'd mentioned esports before, we've certainly seen a lot of athletes get into that, play, mm -hmm. in that space, concussion technology. Where are some of the areas that maybe are, you know, aren't quite on the forefront yet, but you're seeing already back channels and talking to them, this is where some interest might begin to go. Cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that makes sense though, I mean, right? Because it's, how many athletes have talked about the fact that, look, it's not addictive versus, uh, you know, prescription pills. Obviously there's some downsides yeah. there, so. Well, I mean, it, there's also sort of the sexiness of a new market mm. and the opportunity that's coming from, a, you know, a return on your investment yeah. in that industry. But yes, they, they can understand from a, medicinal side, exactly. maybe from pain management, yeah. etc. So there's the wanting to get into an industry that's up and coming, and then there's the, it makes sense for them as individuals. So how do you, you know, look into the other side of it? Obviously this is an emerging industry. Obviously there's a lot of interested parties with financial backing wanting into it. How do you kind of evaluate, even as this industry is taking shape, what is a real opportunity and what is not, and what is worth the time and what isn't? That's a great question. We're, we're working all the time to see what the landscape looks like and relying on smarter people than myself to help us navigate that. So if it's a deal in a specific vertical, we look to bring in an expert that can help us do that. Um, but what we are doing is not leading terms, right? We don't, we're not early investors, we're closing rounds. Mm -hmm. So we're ensuring that uh, by helping mitigate the risk that others uh, that we know smarter uh, VCs or angel high net worths, etc., mm -hmm. are are leading the terms. Gotcha. So Leo, you know, take it a step back. You've you've worked on the league side before. You've done a lot of different things. What made you want to come here? What made you want to focus this as the next priority in your career? So my league years were a long time ago. So when I started, 
at the NHL, I moved over to MLB.com. That's really where I was more entrepreneurial with the benefit of a brand and a budget, uh, but super startup environment. That's when I knew that I loved that fast pace. Every day looked different. Um, but then we started a venture capital firm in 07 where we were investing in sports media technology companies and really started evaluating early uh, early in sports tech, I say, mm -hmm. first of its kind, VC firm. So from there, build, buy, sell, invest in companies. Over the, the rest of my career, I was an operator inside of a mobile video company, a SaaS mm -hmm. platform. Um, why this makes sense for me is it's a culmination of all my experience on the sport, on the professional sports side, the early days of, of sports tech investing. And uh, I think I think it's a, we found a market need for the players to have some education and access to this environment. So where I guess where is uh, in the broader picture, not just you know with you, but in the bigger picture, where do you think things are going to be going with athlete investment in the future? What do you think will be seen trajectory wise that hasn't been happening so far? You mean like the type of deals or how, see what's different about how we look at it is how they're investing, right? They're mm -hmm. not giving their money to a fund manager. Yeah. They're actually taking the time to dig in and do the due diligence and to understand not from just deploying capital, but even when they're evaluating opportunities to be brand ambassadors. Yeah. You know, we, we really see our roster in it through three lenses, the athlete investor, the athlete entrepreneur, and the athlete in transition. And so that connectivity to the startup ecosystem can benefit all three of them in different ways.